I must admit that last video wore me out. That was quite the workout, but I hope you now understand that we can create a buffer without sending data to it, and then later on we can fill in the buffer with whatever what data we want. At any location, we could fill up the entire buffer or just a sub portion of the buffer, it doesn't matter. But one thing I do need to drill home is we call GL buffer data once to allocate the buffer, and then the muck around in that buffer we call GL buffer sub data. I believe it's an error to call GL buffer data more than once on one buffer. All we're doing here is simply saying, hey, the buffer is this size, that's why this call is so important. Anyway, we're now sending data down for multiple triangles. We, every time we paint, we say send another try to OpenGL. Only thing that is left is to actually draw those triangles. So we'll come to here to say draw arrays. We're not doing elements anymore. I got rid of the indices simply because I didn't want to deal with them. The mode here, GL enum and mode, is GL triangles, which again means Every three vertices makes a new triangle. We used that with indices before, and that meant every three indices makes a new triangle. Same idea. First here is the first vertice we wish to start drawing out at. Well, we want to draw or start drawing out at the very first one. And then count here is the number of vertices, not the number of triangles, the number of vertices we wish to render, which would be the number of triangles that we have times the number of vertices per triangle. Why is count in vertices and not triangles? Because this argument right here, the mode that we're drawing, we could pass other things in here like GL lines, which will draw lines instead of triangles, and a line has two vertices instead of three vertices. So that's why that's why this mode or this count is in vertices and the mode is which vertice do you wish to start out at. Hope this works. Control F5 build and run. There we go. Looks like paint was called twice. We have two triangles added to the scene. I'm going to force this window to repaint and repaint over and over. And All I have to do to do that is click on another window. It loses focus and it calls repaint. Repaint, 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 repaint. That is kind of cool. Our triangles are walking across the screen. Now I'm going to change some things up and we are going to witness some behavior. And I want you to see if you can figure out why we're witnessing the behavior that we're witnessing. First of all, guess what the behavior should be. Make an educated hypothesis guess, and then we shall witness the behavior. My goal in changing the code is to get one triangle to draw uh, just once. In fact, let me, let me get those triangles back up here. I want to draw the latest triangle that we are about to draw and no other triangles. All right, so first we'll draw this triangle and next we'll draw this triangle and next we'll draw this triangle. But not, none of the previous triangles will show up. So it'll almost be like one triangle is just moving across the screen in some really crude animated fashion. When we draw here, I'll even do a refresh. Draw and this triangle right here will draw, but none of these other triangles will draw. The rest of the screen should be black. Let's write the code to do that. It's not that hard. All we have to do is alter our draw call. Instead of saying start at the zeroth vertice, start at the num tries minus one, because I want to back off three vertices, times num vertices per try. So on the first triangle, that will be 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0, times vertice per try. That'll be 0, and we'll be good to go. Next time, num tries will be 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, times num vertices per try. That'll offset us past the first three vertices to the next three vertices, so on and so forth. So if my logic is right, I should only see one triangle draw and move across the screen. What other change we have to make, though, is I don't want to draw the entire buffer. I just want to draw three vertices just this one triangle. Let's build, run this. Hopefully we get the effect I'm looking for. There is our one triangle. All right, let me move this down and I'm going to click over here and hopefully that triangle will move over. What? In tarnation? Okay, they're kind of moving and then they're kind of marching in step here and moving back and forth. Any idea? Any idea what's going on here? Oh, do you see that? We doubled up here. We doubled up. Ah! That doubled up here on the end. What is going on here? 
pause the video. See if you can figure it out. I, I hope I have messed with your mind enough that once I show you what's going on, you will learn something very epic here. So just pause the video, think about it, work it out. Remember our main goal with all this is to learn about the color buffer. And what we're seeing here is the color buffer in action. Here's the color buffer. Draw again, color buffer, color buffer, color buffer, color buffer, color buffer. First thing to note, there are two color buffers, the front and the back buffer. And QT swaps these buffers back and forth for us. What happens is, here is my screen. Let's do my screen in a different color. This is my screen, and my screen will display whichever buffer is hooked up as the forward or front buffer. So let's say this buffer is set up as the front buffer, then the screen will display what's in this buffer. In the meantime, we need to draw. And while we're rendering and changing all those pixels, we don't want the screen to show that. That'd be kind of disturbing to the user to see. It's like, oh, the pixels are dancing all over the place. We don't want to show that. So when we draw, we draw to the back buffer. All right, I'll say this is the back buffer, and this is the front buffer. All right, but when we're draw done drawing to this buffer, oh, well, QT says to OpenGL for us is automatically done by QT, or Qt, whatever you want to pronounce it. It says swap, swap the buffers. So then my screen will display what used to be the back buffer, but now it's the front buffer, all right, front buffer. And we start drawing to this buffer, the back buffer. All right, hopefully that, that makes sense. So that's why, that's one of the reasons why we see the triangles marching across the screen. Let's bring this back up. Here's one buffer, here's another buffer. Here's the first buffer again, here's the second buffer. Here's the first buffer again, I can't remember what one we're on, but one buffer, another buffer, another buffer, another buffer, and they're just swapping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So then, then the, ne the next question to ask is, why are all the triangles drawing? All right, I, that makes sense, we're swapping buffers back and forth, but why do we get multiple triangles? Didn't we just say to draw one triangle? I think right here, draw one triangle right there. We didn't say draw all the triangles, just draw one. Well, when we draw, we're drawing to that buffer, and whatever that buffer had in it before, it retains. Okay, let me see if I can illustrate here a little bit. Run this. Here is the buffer. We drew this red triangle here. And then I'm going to click here and click back, and we'll see this buffer again. This red triangle will remain, but the new triangle will be drawn into that color buffer as well. Okay, watch. Blink, blink. Here's the second triangle. Let me do it again. In fact, I'm going to edit the video so you don't even see the back and forth. See, a new triangle. New triangle. New triangle. The color buffer still maintains the old triangles, but then we add a new triangle. Every time we do this draw, we're saying draw a new triangle, and the values that are in the color buffer before this draw remain. Another triangle, another triangle, another triangle, so on and so forth. So this example, that last video was a headache to get this set up, but this example demonstrates one, the color buffer, and two, buffer swapping. All right, the back buffer and the front buffer. Now you may be thinking, why didn't we see this in the previous examples, Jamie? Well, <laughs> in the previous examples, we were drawing the exact same thing every time. We drew that blue triangle, and then we drew that red triangle. And, oh, look, let's draw again, and let's fill the pixels in with the exact same colors they have from the last time we painted. Okay, I hope, I hope that makes sense. We, we weren't changing anything, and it was so important for this example, I had to keep changing what was in the color buffer. We wanted these triangles to move across the screen. So how do we fix this? How do we fix this? Well, do you remember what the depth buffer? We had to clear the depth buffer every time. We never cleared the color buffer, but we cleared the depth buffer. And the reason we cleared the depth buffer is to set all those depth values back to one all the way out as far as they can go. Well, we need to do the same with the color buffer. If we don't clear the color buffer, whatever was there before will remain. Now there's one situation where you don't need to do this, and that is in the case where you are going to draw something that fills up the entire buffer. For example, think of your favorite video game, first person shooter, or something like that. Every time they draw the scene in front of the first person shooter, they fill up every single pixel on the screen, so it's not necessary to clear the color buffer in those games. You can just say, well, 
we're going to draw over whatever was there. It's like you have a, a painting and you paint over what you had before and then you paint over it again. You paint, as long as you cover everything up, no one will notice. Okay, same idea here. So let's go clear the color buffer as well. I believe we still have that clear call for the depth buffer. We can say, hey, GL clear the color buffer. Like so. Now watch, watch how how this changes. Here's our triangle. Triangle. See, it's moving now the way I expected it to because we're still having buffer swapping, but it, every buffer we use, we simply clean it out and then draw the triangle again. So there you go. Now I've read somewhere that clearing buffers can get expensive. And ideally, when we tell the hardware to clear those buffers, we want to tell the hardware to clear all the buffers at once. Right? Now, I don't know the mechanics of the hardware and how that works, but I've heard that clearing a buffer can be expensive. So the way we can combine these clear calls together is say, well, clear the depth buffer bit, and let's or that with the color buffer bit. All right, and so we or these two values together. It looks like GL clear takes a bit-filled mask. You can think of them as integers. If you don't understand bitwise oring and masking and those types of things, I have videos on that in my C++, C++ playlists. Go look up uh, bitwise operations and those kind of things. Even my uh, binary videos will help you there. But essentially I'm saying, hey, OpenGL, clear both of these buffers. When you go to the hardware, tell the hardware to clear both of these instead of going to the hardware twice. So that will have the exact same effect. Let's watch that triangle walk across the screen that's color buffers they exist they're just like the depth buffer except they store rgb values the depth buffer just stores one value you've learned about two buffers very cool